late, they'll have to join us in process. So once again, thank you all for attending today's session. I have a brief PowerPoint presentation here. I'm going to try to get through as quick as possible and then hand over the controls. Again, my name is Andy Weinstein. I am the CEO of ISS Group. I'm joined today by my colleague, Frank Salisi. Frank will actually be handling the controls of the demonstration once we get to that point in our meeting. Uh, today we're going to talk about our business process improvement solutions. Very specifically, we're going to focus on our iApprove and our iFramework solutions. iApprove being an electronic approval routing solution. Of course, we'll get into that in a lot more detail. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on iPurchase and iRFQ and iQuote. iPurchase being very specifically a purchase order requisition management solution that utilizes the iApprove approval routing engine as well as iRFQ and iQuote. All of our solutions utilize our approval routing engine, which is what we call iApprove. We're also going to talk about our iFramework development environment which is what was used to develop our business process improvement solutions. And uh, we're probably not going to talk about iBridge today. So the first thing I want to talk about is what all of our solutions have in common, what we'll call our core features. All of our solutions are 100% web-based solutions, all written in progress technology, progress web speed, with the user interface developed in JavaScript and jQuery. All of our solutions can be implemented in under 30 days. We've had clients implement our, in our, our solutions in less than two weeks. So our solutions are very plug and play. Our solutions utilize the features of our iFramework development environment, which we're going to show you today, as well as our iApprove rules-based approval routing engine. All of our solutions are real-time integrated with QAD. So that's very, very important. There is no data replication. Okay? And we'll, of course, we'll repeat that time and time again. So all the master file data, whether it's vendor master or item master, customer master, general ledger chart of accounts, generalized codes, master comments, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All of this data continues to be maintained within QAD, and we read the QAD tables in real time. And then, upon an action, whether it's creating a purchase order, creating a sales order, depending on which solution you're using, we write to the QAD tables in real time. No data replication involved. That being said, all of our solutions operate without any. QAD end user licenses. So obviously I put that in red because it's a huge savings in both license fees as well as maintenance fees. All of our solutions can be deployed in the cloud or on premise. All of our solutions offer mobile functionality. We are tightly integrated with Microsoft, email, calendar, Excel. And all of our solutions are scalable from a few users to literally a few thousand users. We have clients that are running over a thousand users of some of our solutions. So they're very, very scalable. Again, they're 100% web-based. There's no footprint on the end user machine, whether that's a mobile device or a laptop or a desktop computer. And that's what allows for that scalability. Okay, the primary objective of our solutions is to improve the flow and control of specific business processes. Now, we focus on business processes that require an approval routing as part of that business process. So each one of our solutions, I purchase, I quote, I RFQ, all require a routing prior to an action being performed. In the case of iPurchase, the action upon final approval would be to create a QAD purchase order. For iQuote, upon final 
customer acceptance of a sales quote, a QAD sales order would be created. Right? IRFQ, a request for a quote would be created to go out to a vendor upon approval of item data. So all of the processes, and these are just examples of some processes we're going to talk about more, and Frank is actually going to demonstrate a very specific process today, updating a credit limit inside of QAD. But all of our processes that we focus on utilize our I approve approval routing engine, and all of them require a review and approval prior to an action being performed. Some of the highlights of our I framework development environment, okay, and Frank is going to demonstrate this today, the creation of tables. So this is a rapid development environment we have utilized. This is, we have developed this development environment. So this is our development environment that we utilize to develop our business process improvement solutions. It has a forms generator built into it. It comes with full security. And Frank is going to demonstrate all these different things to you today. So I approve. I approve is where the rubber hits the road. I approve is the approval routing engine inside, embedded inside of our business process improvement solutions. And the whole concept of I approve is to afford the ability to route a request. That request can be a purchase order requisition or a customer sales quote, or a new supplier catalog, or a CapEx requests. And we have clients that are doing all of these things. So these examples that I put here on the screen here are, are actually live examples being used by many clients throughout the U.S. All of these clients and all of these companies are QAD end user organizations. So the objective of I approve is to be able to route a request, whatever type of request it may be, based on a set of configurable rules. Those rules are configurable based on a configuration utility that we offer as part of our solutions that you configure, the end user. There is no programming required. So a very simple rule would be, all PO requisitions over $1,000, John Smith needs to approve. And that's a very, very simple rule, an example of a simple rule. A more complicated rule could be all purchase order requisitions over $1,000 from this specific supplier for this department being shipped overnight, UPS, and or, and or, and or. Andy Weinstein needs to approve. So you can build simple rules, you can build complicated rules, and the rules are based on the data inside the request. You can use any and all of the data to build these rules. So that is the objective of the I approve approval routing solution. I approve is the heart of I purchase, I quote, and I RFQ. So to reiterate what I said, we read the QAD tables in real time, the supplier master, the customer master, item master. A request is created, and that request, again, could be a PO requisition, a customer sales quote, a CapEx request, a vacation request, an IT change order. Any type of request that's generated within your organization that requires distribution to other people in the organization for review and subsequent approval prior to an action being performed. So the request is then loaded in what we call our requests database. That is a progress database, same as the QAD database. The request is submitted for approval. It's run inside of our approval routing engine against the rules that you set up. The list of approvers is created. Emails go out, and those approvers are notified that there is a request outstanding waiting for their review and approval. 
They can be at their desk. They can be out of the office, and they'll be notified on a mobile device. And they can review that request either at their desk via an Internet browser or on their mobile device as if they were sitting at their desk. The objective is to keep the process flowing, keep that request flowing through the cycle. So in the case of a customer sales quote, we want that sales quote to get out to the customer as soon as possible so we can turn it around and create a QAD sales order. Right? We have a client, Laird Technologies, implemented our iQuote solution. It took their sales quotes from two weeks to less than two days. So it reduced their sales quote approval cycle from two weeks to less than two days. And of course, that's a huge impact on cash flow and the bottom line. Subsequent to final approval, we create purchase orders, sales orders, we update QAD master files, depending on what the request is. If it's a CapEx request and needs approval, we may create a project inside of QAD. If it's a sales quote, we'll create a sales order. Right? If we have a process to revise the QAD customer credit limit, we'll update the customer record inside the QAD customer master table upon final approval. And all of this, of course, is fully automated. It's fully audited. We keep track of all submittal attempts, all data changes that are made, all approvals, all rejections. And we also integrate with other systems. We have client international automotive components that's using our iPurchase solution. They create purchase order requisitions inside of iPurchase, and those PO requisitions are then transferred into an AS400 for subsequent processing. Okay, so that's, that's it. So we're going to go through iFramework and iApprove today. Okay, so I'm going to hand this over to Frank. And Frank is going to show you iFramework and iApprove. Thank you, Andy. You guys will be seeing my screen in just a moment. Okay, hopefully it's uh, it's it's live now. You guys can see it. Um, we're going to talk about iFramework, which is our progress developed in uh, development environment. Okay, um, we built this because over the last 10 years we've been building a lot of web applications. I say, I say 10 years, really more like 15 or 17. Um, but we've been developing a lot of progress-based web applications, and we've always started from the ground up. Um, so we decided it was time to, to build a, an environment that would make it a lot simpler for us to build these web apps, uh, time-wise, uh, functionality-wise. We've added a lot of functionality to it. So we've, we've built something now that is very reusable, um, and all of our stuff that we develop for the last two years has been using this technology. And um, we're very happy with it, very excited about it, and our customers are as well. What you're looking at is a, a sample screen that I, that I want to walk through today to show you a little bit about what iFramework um, gives us uh, as far as the development environment. All right, so this is just a sample screen that I chose arbitrarily uh, to review. On the left-hand side is our menu. All right, this is a secure menu that the administrator can assign security privileges for all the users. So each individual user has access to only those functions that uh, we give them access to. Okay, so we have four different categories here, and then we can restrict what the user, what each individual user would see. Okay, so that's our menu. It appears on every page. Every single page, by the way, is going to look identical to what we're looking at here. The data will be different. You know, the data that we're capturing is going to be different, but the pages all look the same. The menu on the left, the maintenance area or data entry area up on top, and then a browse of all the records that you can maintain on this screen down at the bottom. All right, so they all look the same. Um, you may have some screens that have multiple tabs where we're collecting more than 
more data that can, we can fit on one screen. So we'll have multiple tabs up here, and you can flip through the tabs. And I'll, I'll probably end up showing you an example of that later on. Okay. So we have a menu on the left, data entry area on the, on the right, on the top right. This is a section where we're going to capture data. Okay. And we've done some things to, to make this really efficient as far as development goes. We can, we can build many screens in, in just in minutes. You know, I say minutes, literally minutes, we can build screens um, using our tools. And we've added some functionality that, uh, that, that we get automatically without having to do much like a lookup. So if I want to look up projects, these are all the projects that are in QAD. I only have one project in my system, but if I had more, we would get uh, a list of all those projects. This is one type of, of, uh, of enhancement we've added to our product is being able to easily look up data from other tables, or other places, and pull that data onto to the record that you're modifying. Okay. All of our screens have the standard uh, functionality, the standard buttons down here, save, new, delete. Okay. We also have a copy. That all, that's all standard. We have notes and audit trails. Now, notes is not only notes, but it's also attachments. So we can attach unlimited notes and unlimited attachments to every piece of data in the system. So you'll notice here that I have a test note that we entered. I have a PDF file and I have uh, an Excel file that were all attached to this one um, record that I'm modifying. And if I click open, it'll open up that PDF file in your PDF viewer. Okay, so you can easily attach files by clicking, picking a file, and uploading it into the system. You could attach notes and attachments to every single piece of data that's in the system. Every screen has this button. So it doesn't matter what screen you're on, you'll have the notes button to attach notes. Okay. I click on the first record here, this uh, silica natural, and I want to show you the audit trail. So not only do we have notes for every single record, but we also keep an audit trail of all changes that were made to the data. So you'll see here that this record was created on, on May 8th yesterday at, at 520. Okay. I don't have any changes to it. If I go ahead and change this from annual to one time, click on save, go back into the audit trail, you'll see now that a second audit record was written out that says Frank just changed it on, on May 9th today at 1250. Okay, and Frank changed the recurrence from annual to one time. So we keep track of all the data changes. This is all functionality that's built um, that you get for free when using our development environment. There is no additional coding necessary to get any of the functionality that I've shown you so far. Okay, it just happens automatically. The next thing we have is uh, down at the bottom, we have our browse. This is a browse of all the records that you're capturing. So you're collecting data, basically. And this is down at the bottom is all the data that you've collected so far. And you can do certain things with that data. First is you, know, you can sort. This is something that um, we're really accustomed to and take for granted in a lot of our systems. But on the web, it's very difficult to do sorting, not to mention multi-column sorting. So here I'm sorting on two columns. I can sort an unlimited number of columns. Okay. So that's built into our product. The other thing that we have built in is the ability to choose which columns you want to look at. So every single page, there's a browse down at the bottom. And the individual user can determine which pieces of data they want to see. You know, what you want to see may not be exactly the same as what your coworker wants to see. So you can both have different views of that same data. Right? On the left-hand side, you have all the different fields that you can put on the screen. So for example, if I wanted to put this average days late, we're talking about customers here. If I wanted to add that to the screen, I would put it there and then I can move it up and down. When I hit show results, you'll see that that column now appears on my screen with the appropriate data. All right, so that's again, all, all part of standard functionality that you get within our development environment. The next piece is um, we can download the browse to Excel. Now, unfortunately, I don't have Excel loaded on this machine that we're looking at. But um, this file here is a, a comma-separated values file 
that's going to contain all the data that you see in this browse. So any data that's in the system, you can export with the click of one button, okay? And it would export to a user-friendly tool such as Excel. All right, and then you can slice and dice that data um, because you, everyone's pretty much familiar with how Excel works. So it's very easy to slice and dice any data that you've captured. Continuing on, we have our search function or advanced search function. This is very, very powerful stuff. When we're searching for data, um, we, we can tell the system how we want to search for it. So, for example, I'm saying, show me all of the, the records where the customer begins. Well, I, don't, I actually don't have any customers on this. Um, let me put description begins with a Z. Okay. So if I do that, I have my three rows where the description begins with a Z. Now I can, sorry, wrong button there. I can use multiple search criteria to find stuff. So I can build many different um, search conditions, okay, and, and then try to find something. And these are treated as and statements. So all of these have to be true because it's saying this and this and this and this has to be true. But I could click on that, make it an or, where now it says this has to be true, or this has to be true, or this has to be true, or this has to be true. All right. So very powerful in, in finding things. Now, not only can we change it from and and or, but we could start grouping. So I can make those two an and and these two an or, and then say they one or the other has to be true. Okay. We could do something like that. Now, that's getting very complicated, but I think you see the point where we have a very flexible way of, of searching for that data that you're looking for using AND and OR conditions, and you'll be able to get to those results. And again, that's built into every single browse, whether it's down here or whether it's this browse here. Every single browse in the system has a way of searching for data. So anytime you see something like this, you'll have the ability to change columns, to export it to Excel, and to search for data. Another thing we have is if I select multiple rows, I have the ability to do a batch delete. I can delete all those rows, all that data all at one swoop without having to delete individual records. I can also modify all that data all at once. So if I wanted to attach a QAD project to all three of those records, I would check off the QAD project code, pick my project, hit save, and now you'll see that that project code was assigned to all three records. Okay. And only that project code was changed. We didn't change everything. All the other data, just that one field was changed on those three records. So very powerful stuff and, and ways to make your data entry and capture and analysis a lot easier to use, uh, maybe maybe easier than we're used to. And, and the beauty of it all, it's all web-based web application. So you don't need to install any software on your desktop to get this. All right, so that, that's a little bit of iFramework, and this is the environment where we build all of our applications on. So we have gone ahead and built some applications. We have um, something called IR, IRFQ, which I'm not going to really get into, but it's, it's to uh, generate RFQs for purchasing. And then we have our iApprove product. And our iApprove product is basically geared towards replacing the forms-based approvals that are routing through your organizations today. So everyone, every organization has paper that someone fills out and, and passes around um, to get approval for. So what we're trying to do with iApprove is to digitize that form and, and route it electronically for approval. So rather than me having to walk over to six different people to get their signatures and three weeks go by, and then after I have all the signatures, I have to pass that along to someone else so that they can actually go into QAD and now, you know, change whatever it is that we ask to be changed, whether it's to put a purchase order in or to change a customer credit limit or to uh, go into my HR system to, to approve my vacation and, and put me on the schedule, or if it's a new hire, to set up that new person in Active Directory and on the network. You know, whatever it is, we're all doing that stuff manually. So I approve is a way where we're going to capture the data electronically, you know, whatever that data is, because we have the development environment now where we can digitize that form quickly. So we'll capture that data, we'll route it for approval, all electronically, Everyone gets an email, and they can uh, log in from their PC or from their mobile device and approve or reject that, that, that request. 
And finally, once the request is completely approved, we will go ahead and perform some type of action. Um, and an action could be, like I said, create a purchase order, uh, you know, change a customer credit limit. You know, whatever it is, we can go ahead and perform that action automatically inside of QAD right, without you having to retype it in. So we, we are trying to automate the entire process. So what I'm going to show you next is a, a sample of a screen that we built for iApprove, which is to digitize a customer credit limit increase. All right, so one of our clients needs to have tighter control on customer credit limits. They just don't want their users going into customer maintenance and bumping up the credit limit for the customer. And that's what's happening today because there's no controls. Um, and they have a form which they fill out and pass around. So we've been asked to take that form and create an I approve screen from it. All right, and that's what I'm showing you today. So again, it all looks the same as that previous screen that I showed you. The menu is here on the left, the maintenance area on top, browse on the bottom. All that same functionality uh, that I showed you earlier all applies to an I approve form as well. What we add for I approve is this section up here at the top that says approval information. This is not just a standard form where we're ca capturing data, but this is a form that needs to get routed for approval. So we give you a section at the top that's going to indicate the current status of that routing. All right, so you'll see this one here is pending. Then we've also added submit, reject, and retract buttons, I'm sorry, and approve buttons down here on the right-hand side. So all the I approve forms will have some extra buttons here that show up when appropriate that will allow us to interact with the approval functionality of I approve. All right, so we can submit for approval, we can approve, reject, and retract. So this one is pending, and I'm the originator. The originator is Frank, and I'm logged in as Frank, so I only have the option to retract. And if I click that, you'll see the status change back to not, not submitted, meaning that uh, I'm going to actually take it back from the approver's queue, and I'm going to work on it some more. Once I'm finished working on it, I can resubmit it for approval. All right, but before I do all that, let's, let's walk through what we're capturing here. And again, what I really want you guys to keep in mind is that this is only a sample. It's not the, um, you know, it's not our solution for credit increase. It's, it's a solution for credit increase, okay? Uh, that, that one of our clients, John Crane, um, uses today. So we captured data. We have lookups for the customer number. So if I want to pick, you know, we're changing the credit limit for a particular customer. So when we click the lookup, it'll show us all of our customers in QAD. I can search for a particular one that I'm, that I'm looking for. We'll just go ahead and pick Colossal Conglomerates. And when I go ahead and choose that, it will default to me. Well, you know what? If we start with a brand new one, it'll be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and pick John Crane. We'll go ahead and pick Colossal Conglomerates. And you'll see when I pick that, it defaults a whole bunch of information in for me that came directly out of QAD. We have our year that the customer was created. We have our standard terms that the, that the customer uh, and I and we have agreed upon. And then we have a little box that here that's, saying, that's telling us that this customer's terms are non-standard. Uh, standard terms would be net 30 in, in our case here. That goes away. But if you pick anything else, it becomes non-standard. It shows us our current credit limit, and then it asks us for our new credit limit. You know, what does this customer need as far as a credit limit? So we'll go ahead and put in $200,000. And we also have a collector code here, which is responsible uh, for collections. We capture some other data here, UCC, uh, a type, what type of customer is this? This is just extra reference fields that the approvers will require when they're approving this credit request at John Crane. And we also have some sales data that we're going to capture, some D&B information and some uh, historical sales data for the customer. So this is what John Crane needs to capture when they are approving or denying a credit limit increase. If you had something similar, you may capture different fields. Okay. Once I have all the data entered, I can go ahead and submit this or save that first. And you'll see I have a new record down here. And then I can submit it for approval. And at this point, the, the requisition becomes pending. And if I go into my approval history, you'll see that the routing has started for this particular requisition. 
and the first person notified was Peggy Jennings. Now I want to speak about the routing because this is sort of the heart of all of our applications. We have a rules-based configurator that determines who the people are that need to approve a requisition. So all of these folks that you see listed here were all determined to be approvers by the rules that you guys, the end customers, define for a credit increase. All right, so each, each form is defined separately. A credit increase approval routing is going to be different than a vacation approval routing. Okay, so different approvers because we're talking about two completely different things. So you're able to define those rules separately and right, individually. And then within each rule, you can specify what the conditions are that are going to make that rule true. So for example, Peggy Jennings may be required to approve all credit increases, period. Anytime a customer wants a credit limit increase, Peggy Jennings needs to review it. Then Gloria Moran may decide that uh, the rule for her is that anytime a credit limit is over $5,000, then Gloria needs to approve. Okay. The admin group here may need to approve any time the credit limit is over 50000 and the division that we're, this customer belongs to is John Crane, as opposed to U.S. Seal. Now, U.S. Seal may have different approvers, but when it's John Crane and it's $50,000 or more, then some member of the admin group needs to approve. Okay? You can build these conditions using and and or uh, statements very similar to the way you search for data where you build that search box that we filled out on that search screen, the same kind that, so this is how you build those conditions. You say, if this is true and this is true and this is true, or it's an or or it's an and, then the rule is true, okay? And if that rule is true, then we'll insert the approvers into the particular spots. So that's how these, these folks got on the approval routing, based on those rules that you defined. All right, so the next thing is that we have sequential and simultaneous approvals. Sequential approvals are one after the other. And right now, right here, we have a case of a sequential approval where Gloria Moran, you notice this, this approval record here has not been activated yet. There's no little yellow circle that says pending because Gloria has not been notified of this, of this request yet. And Gloria will not be notified unless Peggy approves. So basically, Gloria is, is waiting on Peggy before she can approve. So that's sequential. It's one after the other. That second person can't approve until the first person approves. We also have simultaneous. You'll see here the sequence is 500 for both of these records. This sequence column determines whether it's simultaneous or sequential. Every time the number goes up, it becomes sequential. When the number is the same, it becomes simultaneous. So once Peggy approves and Gloria approves and, the, and a member of the admin group approves, then both Andy and Diane get notified at the same time, and Diane can actually come into the system before Andy and approve the requisition. All right? So then the order at this point doesn't matter between these last two. It matters all the way up to here, but once it gets here, the order does not matter. So that's our simultaneous approvals. I spoke a little bit about groups. You'll see I have an admin group here. Um, and a group is nothing more than two or more people uh, of which one needs to approve. So here I have three different people, Chang, Frank, and Ben Whalen, that need to approve this rec. We only need one of those members to approve. It can be any one of them. All right, so that's what a group is. You'll also see next to Chang that um, the out of office um, tag there. So Chang is out of office, and the system is telling us that Scott Carpence is Chang's delegate while Chang is on vacation. So when you're an approver, we have an out of office menu option here that um, we can pick a delegate. So if I'm going on vacation, I can say, well, Bill is going to handle all my work between now and when I get back next Friday. Okay, and I could save that off, and now the system I could pick a start date and end date. Let's say I pick from Monday to Friday of next week. Next Monday, when um, that time passes, the system will, sell Bill, will send Bill an email saying, hey, Bill, Frank's on vacation. You're going to handle all this work. And every time Frank gets an email for my approve, Bill will get copied on that email. 
so that Bill can go into the system and uh, approve on Frank's behalf. All right, so we have complete out-of-office functionality for the approvers. All right, so that's, that's a little bit of, um, of an explanation on, on how these people got here and what all this means. What we also have is this retract button. I'm going to hit it one more time. You'll notice up here it says show approval attempt number one, and there's nothing else in this box. I've only tried to get this rec approved one time so far. I just created the record with you guys on the phone. Um, I routed it for approval, and this is what I've seen. If I retract, I can retract it. And let's say I said, oh, you know what? I didn't want to choose non-standard terms. I only wanted the net 30. My, my bad. Let me fix that real quick, and let me save that again. And then let me submit it. So when I do that, you'll notice that the rules change a little bit. If you recall, I had two people at level 500 before. And this is just an example how one of the rules in the system is based, or two rules in the system are based on this credit terms. If someone picks non-standard, then we need additional approvals. But now because we chose standard terms, we don't need those additional approvals. And things changed around a little bit. Diane went from being level 500 to being level 300 now. So that's an example of how things change. But you'll also notice up here, it's now saying show approval attempt number two. So we're looking at the second attempt to get this approved. If I go ahead and click on the first, it'll show me what it was originally. And I now have a blue icon here, and it tells me that Frank has retracted this requisition. And this same type of functionality is going to be shown if an approver was to approve or reject a requisition. If they reject, it would turn red. And when you reject, and I'll show you that right now rather than actually speaking about it, we're going to log in as the first approver that's on the list, Peggy Jennings. All right, we'll go to our credit increase. And this is the requisition that we're working on. This is that approval of tab number two if Peggy needs to approve or reject. These are the two options. Now, Peggy, once she's in here, she can review all this data. She actually has the ability to modify the data. The Save button here is highlighted, so Peggy can make changes. And that's something that you determine whether or not you're going to allow that. You may say that your approvers are not allowed to make changes when the requisition is pending. Only the originator can make changes. Um, but I have my changes turned on for this case and for this user. So Peggy needs to approve. She can review all the data, look at the notes, you know, look at anything she needs to, and then decide on whether or not she's going to approve or reject this requisition. If she rejects it, we're, we're going to enter or ask for a reason why she's rejecting. Okay? I'm not going to reject that. It's just going to take up time. Um, but if I go ahead and approve it, you'll see that the circle now turned green and the pending moved on to Gloria. So now Gloria got an email saying that Gloria needs to approve. Okay. That cycle continues until everyone has approved. Once everyone approves, then it'll look like this. I just clicked on an approved record here. There's another one here. It'll look like this once everyone's approved. And in this particular case, the new credit limit will be written off into QAD automatically upon final approval. Okay. So that's, um, that's I approve. At this point, I just want to open it up to, to see if there are any questions of what you've seen so far. Andy, do you have anything else that you'd like for me to show that I may have left out? No, I think uh, that's it, Frank. Terrific. Okay. So let me just take it back. Let me take the control back from you. All right. And so this was the uh, PowerPoint that I was going through. There are a bunch more slides here. I'm not going to go through them now. Uh, everybody that attended today's session will get a copy of this. It does uh, list the different feature sets for each one of our solutions. I purchase, I RFQ, I quote. Okay, so you'll all get this in the hard copy as well. Okay, picture of the companies. This is a partial list of clients that are using our solutions. And of course, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to either send me an email or 
give me a call. My direct line is listed there. So once again, thank you all for attending today's session. We appreciate your time very much. And that concludes today's session.